time and again, human rights defenders have spoken out against the rights violation by different institutions and actors of the state, but getting answers still looks a long journey to walk. The Foundation for Human Rights Initiative carried out an eight-month inquiry into the human rights situation during the 2016 electoral period in the country and has now released a report titled Human Rights and Elections in Uganda 2016, a call for action representing the findings, focusing mainly on four themes. Uh, focus on the rights to vote and to participate in public affairs, that's one. It interrogates the freedoms of expression and assembly. It looks at the right to life, liberty and security of person. And it focuses on the question of access to justice within the context of the election. Dr. Livingstone Sawanyana, the Executive Director, Foundation for Human Rights Initiative, challenges the level at which democracy is valid in Uganda as this plays a vital role in offering leveled playing ground for all citizens during voting. Has not made a single pronouncement on the question of democracy as we move towards middle income status 2020. <laughs> he has very, uh, on many occasions, left out any statement, any pronouncement that has to do with rights, that has to do with democracy. So the key question there, does democracy matter? While launching the report, the chief guest, Dr. Uchena Emolinye, the country representative of the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, expressed the need for the human rights to be clearly defined, especially when dealing with elections. Human rights in the context of election is narrow. It does not look at the credibility or legitimacy of an election. It looks narrowly on two important fronts. Right to vote and right to be voted for. It looks at our citizens able to freely and willingly vote. It secondly looks at our candidates freely and willingly allowed the environment to contest elections. Erasmus Twalhuwa, the director at the Directorate of Human Rights and Legal Services, Uganda Police Force dismissed allegations by City Lord Mayor Elias Lokwago that the police force tops the list of human rights abusers. The APF as an institution has put in place measures and a system to ensure that the APF is human rights compliant. With all these violations going on, with all the impunity we are witnessing in the country. Actually, this report is summarizing impunity in this country. Impunity, nothing else, but impunity. You can see in the, the list of institutions mentioned on page 92, 93, and 94, to government, parliament, electoral commission, Uganda police, the electoral public, and name it, so many institutions here that is a manifestation of a failed system. Meanwhile, Dr. Tanga Odoi, the chairman of the NRM Electric Commission, notes that it should be a collective responsibility for all the citizens to observe the significance of human rights. When we talk about human rights, he only says that history should be used, that history should not be lived in. So the history of violation of human rights must be used to correct the next generation. The 94-page report recommends, among others, the government to introduce comprehensive electoral and political reforms to strengthen the electoral laws, Parliament to amend Section 15 of the Electoral Commission, Article 104 of the Constitution to extend the time for lodging an election petition from 10 days to 30 days. It also recommends the Electoral Commission to ensure a timely delivery of voting materials and the judiciary to uphold its independence. The report that was done through a research for eight months during and after the 2016 general elections shows that theoretically the government is committed to promote and protect both civic and political rights. However, practically, it still looks a very biggest challenge as regards to the political commitment. Just Lena Chibule, WBS.